When dealing with others, one should not be excessively generous or overly affectionate. Excessive kindness can cause the other party to cross the line and often leads to estrangement. People tend to relate everything to themselves, yet if it does not benefit them, they act as if it has nothing to do with them. Even if someone has been by your side for a long time, keep in mind that they can be replaced at any time. People's attitudes change when their interests change. Thus, once you understand someone's character, you should know that it's necessary to deal with them accordingly. Everyone wears a mask. It's impossible to know what their real face looks like or how they will change over time. Even in the closest relationships, we must acknowledge the nature of human beings. Therefore, instead of relying on the unstable outside world, we must rely on our own inner self. Humans are like hedgehogs. If you get too close, you get pricked by their spines. One should not expect too much from others or from many things in the world. What do you hope to gain from others? Ultimately, everyone is alone. The important thing is who one is when they are alone. As Goethe said, in all things, ultimate, humans must seek salvation from themselves. Betrayal is committed not by someone distant, but by someone very close. It's better to assume that there are only those who betray slowly and those who betray quickly, but no one who doesn't betray it at all. Therefore, even in the closest relationships, if you have doubts, do not just overlook them, but go through a verification process. If you have doubts, don't show it immediately, but pretend to believe for the time being. Then, the other person will soon tell a bigger lie and their true nature will be revealed. And if you happen to see their bad side, remember it and adopt an appropriate attitude towards them. We must really only on ourselves. A wise person lives happily and contentedly by themselves. We seek ourselves in others when we cannot live self-sufficiently without yearning for more. Most of human angst and pain comes from worrying about what will others think of me? Our jealousy and hatred are also largely branches grown from the same root. Those who live by the standards of others ultimately become their slaves. Those who live beyond the recognition of others, without being conscious of others' eyes, are often happy. In order to be happy, we need to let go of the desire for honor, which values the judgment of others and a certain kind of vanity. What distinguishes human happiness from unhappiness is not something objective. It simply depends on how we feel and perceive it. People are captured by feelings of envy because they look at those in better situations than themselves. When people feel that others have more wealth or receive more love from others, they often think about their own misery. All unhappiness begins with comparison. Although jealousy is one of the natural instincts of humans, it harbors the thorns of immorality and unhappiness. Therefore, jealousy has long been considered an enemy and a constraint that blocks our happiness. We should try as much as possible to root out this instinct of jealousy from our personality like weeds. To be content with and enjoy what you have, you should not compare yourself with others. A person who envies and begrudges those who live better and have more can never be happy. To be happy, 
you should think about how many people are worse off than you. Looking for people who are less fortunate than you is the fastest way to comfort yourself. Think about how many people on this planet are less fortunate than you. There are people who cannot see or hear from birth, and people who cannot even afford a proper meal. They too are people who live with you in your surroundings. Think about how many people are following behind you, rather than how many people are ahead of you. The world in which a person lives changes shape depending on their perspective. We often tend to ignore what we have and think only about what we lack. This leads us down the path of unhappiness. We should always look below rather than above and doubt whether those we perceive as happier than us are really just appearing that way or actually hiding their misery. Are you currently envious of other people's situations? In fact, their circumstances may just be suited to their personalities, not necessarily your. If you were in that situation, you might feel miserable and struggle. Just as fish are happy in water, birds in the sky, and moles underground, a suitable environment brings happiness. Depending on how your mind moves, happiness and unhappiness can switch places. Let's forget the unhappy past that we cannot change as quickly as possible. And we should not lose our peace of mind because of an uncertain future. We know that an unfortunate event will never happen, or at least not happen right now. The same goes for relationships with others. To be happy, you need to live based on your own thoughts and judgments, rather than clinging to maintaining relationships with others. The more we value others' evaluations, the more harm we do to ourselves, and the weaker we become. So we must control our instincts well, not be swayed by others' praise or criticism, and prioritize our own thoughts and perspectives. A person who does not care about the gaze of others, or whether they are acknowledged by others, is much happier. What's more important than the content or outcome of a task is how I think about that task. Those who live captivated by thoughts of what others might think are nothing but slaves. A slave always watches their master's expression and must follow their master's commands. Why would anyone act like a slave, making others their master? Ultimately, Human happiness depends on how well we can stand alone. Nearly all the sorrow we feel arises from our relationships with other people. We waste most of our lives trying to be like others. All unhappiness begins in trying to fit ourselves to the eyes of others. A person can fully be themselves when alone. If they don't love solitude, they don't love freedom. Human socialization is not because we enjoy it, but because we fear solitude. I am me, inevitably. If I'm not ashamed of myself, others won't be ashamed of me either. All our unhappiness stems from our inability to be alone. Thus, we should develop a habit of loving solitude People with outstanding individuality, by their very nature, tend to isolate themselves, which can be difficult in youth, but as they age, it can give them a sense of freedom. If it was hard to develop a habit of loving solitude in your younger days, now it can be a very comfortable and simple thing. In other words, the feeling of solitude becomes as natural as a fish meeting water. How any aspect of life approaches is entirely dependent on a person's mood. 
Even if a person is young, beautiful, and wealthy, we cannot judge whether they are truly happy. Happiness does not exist in objective facts. The creation of a happy life is entirely up to me. Don't compare what I lack with others, but recognize what I have. Take a good look at what you have. Existence itself is far more important than fame. Subjectivity is far more essential and enjoyable in our lives than objectivity. As pleasure comes from subjective perception, Thus, how painful it must be for someone who cannot accept me as I am. So you must make time to look within yourself. You need to observe not only your inner self, but also what you like. If you accurately assess your capabilities and find a job that suits you well, it will be easier to feel happy. Those who choose jobs that do not suit them have difficulty avoiding unhappiness. So it is continually important to look closely at yourself. Don't leave yourself in agony over regrets about the past. There are said to be masses of commoners everywhere in the world, ready to attach themselves to anything and always ready to seize anything. They would be like pests that swarm in countless number. They do so merely to escape their own idleness. Those who have enough mental warmth themselves will not need to mix with that crowd. Intellectually superior people can gain two benefits from a solitary life. One is the benefit of being with oneself and the other is the benefit of not being with others. All associations will come with coercion, tribulations, and risks. Considering this, the second benefit deserves high recognition. Socializing can be risky because it sometimes involves contact with immoral or irrational people. An unsociable person is one who does not need to have such sociability. Almost all problems we experience arise from social interaction. So the fact that we possess many things to the extent that socializing is unnecessary is a great fortune in itself. When we encounter painful events, we should first find something worth being thankful for and be fully grateful for it. Then peace of mind will come, the mood will calm down, and it becomes easier to endure difficult situation. People recover their physical strength by eating food and cultivate their minds by reading. Humans lose most of their potential because they want to be like others. Trying to remember everything you read is like trying to keep all the food you ate in your body. A person who has experienced frustration has their own history and steps onto the path of wisdom that allows for insight into life. 